Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. I caught my wife cheating on camera for months. Now I'm serving her divorce papers as a final anniversary gift. It all started on September 25th. I work in collision repair. And that day, I cut my leg open while working on a truck. I ended up in the ER with 39 stitches 5 inside, 34 outside. I was put on painkillers and couldn't drive, so I tried calling my wife for help. No answer. I kept calling and texting, asking her to pick up. Nothing. After an hour and a half I gave up and took an Uber home. As we turned onto my street, I saw her standing in our doorway, kissing her boss. This wasn't just a peck they were making out. I took a couple of pictures, told the driver to keep going, and headed back to work. I sat in the break room for hours, feeling numb and heartbroken. When the painkillers wore off, I drove home. She wasn't there when I arrived but she came back later, acting concerned about my injury and lying to my face about her day. I knew it was all BS a week later. I learned she hadn't worked a Friday in three years. Since then I've been watching her every move, checking her devices, and even installing cameras in the house. I've been watching her cheat on me in real time for two months. Apple products sync everything so I've been able to access all her data from an old phone. I found out that she doesn't just dislike my son she actually hates him, probably because having him around during the summer cramps her style. I also learned that this affair has been going on for years, and it's not just her boss. One of the men she's been sleeping with is someone I've worked with and considered a friend for 14 years. His wife has been helping cover up the affair. They introduced me to her, watched me propose, and even attended our wedding, all while knowing she was cheating. I know of at least four men two I know personally, two I don't. They've had sex in my bed on my couch at my kitchen table, and in my shower. They even used my soap. While I was away on trips, a parade of men came through my house, sleeping with my wife. She didn't even bother to shower between some of them. When I went to Chicago for Thanksgiving, it was the same story she spent the entire weekend screwing other men in our home. I kept all of this to myself until I finally told my ex-girlfriend. I've managed to stay calm, but inside. I'm inches away from losing it. I almost confronted her several times but decided to play it cool. I even apologized to her for our argument and said I'd see a doctor for erectile dysfunction, even though I knew she was calling me a limp piece of crap in her texts to her boss. This is not the woman I fell in love with seven years ago. At this point I think she's got serious mental health issues maybe even sociopathy. Either way, this is not what I signed up for. It took a lot for me to ask her to marry me, especially after my first divorce. Back then, I lost everything $43 to my name, no home, no car and no means to do my job. I couch surfed for three years while paying alimony and debt. On my 24th birthday, I sat on a friend's couch, drunk, with a gun in my mouth, ready to end it all. I didn't have the guts to pull the trigger, and since that day, I've kept $43 in my wallet to remind me of the lowest point in my life. I'm not at that point yet, but I feel close. All the therapy I went through back then, it feels like it's been undone. This time it's just been a slow, agonizing process of lies and deceit. I don't love this woman anymore. There's no fixing this. I'm done. Our anniversary is Pearl Harbor Day, and I'm going to make sure she never forgets it. Right now, though, the days drag on. I'm exhausted, I have a constant headache, and it feels like all the therapy I went through has been wiped away. Update. Yesterday, I served her divorce papers. For those asking, I wasn't in a great state of mind then, and I'm still not, but here's what happened. I woke up, left the house after she went to work, grabbed breakfast, rented a truck, and went back to change the locks. My friend and her husband came over to help, and we packed up all her things the bedroom furniture I got her as a wedding gift, my couch, the dining table she defiled. We threw her clothes into garbage bags and took everything to storage. By lunchtime, I bought flowers and chocolates and went to her work. I gave her the flowers, kissed her, and told her I'd love to take her to lunch, but I had a doctor's appointment. I also told her not to make plans for the night because I wanted to give her a night she'd remember. She was all smiles, thinking nothing was wrong. As I left, I saw her boss, Steffing Tom, and gave him a big smile and wave. At 2 p.m., a deputy was serving her the divorce papers at work. Meanwhile, I was standing outside F.T.'s house, texting him the pictures I took the day I caught them together, along with a selfie of me in front of his house. I knocked on the door, and his wife answered. I showed her the photos and told her about the affair. She slapped me and started crying. I gave her a thumb drive with everything on it and advised her to get checked for STDs. Then she asked, why are you doing this to me? Honestly I didn't have a good answer, I just told her she had a right to know. Afterward my phone blew up with texts and calls from my wife, asking what was going on, I ignored them. Later I changed my Facebook status to divorced and messaged her, telling her she could pick up her things at 7pm, not a minute before. Apparently Ft hadn't told her what I did right away because she texted me again, furious that I'd told his wife. Amber, the friend who covered for my wife, called me next. I asked her how long she had known about the affair. She admitted she'd known the whole time even before my wife and I got together. All this time I was just a side piece. That was a hard pill to swallow. I sent her some photos and told her to never contact me again. At 4 p.m., my wife showed up at the house, banging on the door and yelling. I ignored her. 
She called again but I had turned off my phone. Eventually she broke a window and left. When she returned at 7 p.m., deputies were already there. She looked defeated. I handed her the storage key, her clothes and my lawyer's card. She tried the whole I love you routine, but I wasn't having it. She yelled, saying it was her house too, and I couldn't kick her out. I calmly told her she had screwed herself out of it. She lost her temper, screamed at me, and even punched me. I didn't react, but the deputies restrained her. I declined pressing charges and just asked them to make her leave. After she left, everything hit me hard. I thought I'd feel better, but I felt awful. I've been crying more than I ever have, and there are over 600 unanswered texts and calls on my phone. I'm cutting contact with all mutual friends. I don't want anyone trying to mediate things. I'll deal with it later. I didn't even call my son that night, which I usually do every evening. I'll tell him tonight, but I doubt he'll be upset he was never fond of her. Update 2. Today, I met with my wife and her lawyer. We signed for an uncontested divorce, and it'll be official in about two months. I feel some relief, but mostly, I just feel sad. She couldn't look me in the eye for most of the meeting. Her lawyer was decent and asked if reconciliation was possible, even though it's not. We went along with it just to get full disclosure. What she wrote down didn't even come close to what I already knew. My lawyer showed camera stills and asked about people she hadn't mentioned. We eventually got a more truthful version. The two unknown men were recent online hookups. She admitted she had been having an affair with the entire time I've known her only stopping briefly after we got engaged. She resumed the affair a year into our marriage. She also admitted to starting an affair with F.P. Amber's husband during a 4th of July barbecue at my house. She said she didn't love him. She just got off on it. This year, she got even bolder, hooking up with random guys from online sites. I'm sure she had other parking lot hookups, but I didn't press her on it. I asked her why she married me if she was already in love with someone else. She said she loved me, wanted the security, and that I was good in bed. But she had loved Fief to 10 years, and since he wasn't leaving his wife, she settled for me. Both Feet and F.P. have been fired, thanks to Amber raising hell at work. My soon-to-be ex-wife is living with her parents now. I don't care what happens to Fee or Mrs. Ford if he stays married, I might have to give him a beating. Then, she dropped another bombshell. Two years ago, she had an abortion because she didn't know who the father was. That hit me hard. We had tried for a kid at one point, and I would have loved to have another child. I'll never know if that baby was mine. At that point, I had enough and walked out. When you've been hit so many times you get numb to it. That's where I am now. She could tell me she started the Chicago fire, and I wouldn't be surprised. I told my lawyer to move forward with the uncontested divorce. No alimony, I just want this to be over. At 5, 43 p.m., she signed. In two months, it'll be official. I keep my house, my retirement funds, and all my property. She gets $73,000 from our savings, and we're done. I don't care what happens to her now. I don't feel relieved. I feel like I've been chewing on a crap sandwich for three months and that's all I can taste. The abortion has been stuck in my mind since she mentioned it, and I think it'll stay there for a long time. I don't know what I'm going to do next. Maybe I'll feel better when it's all finalized. Right now I just want to be left alone. I don't want any sympathy, just quiet. I've been reflecting on everything I've done, and all I see are mistakes. This is a horrible mindset to be in, but it's where I'm at. At least I kept my stuff this time, but I'm done with relationships. I won't be doing this again. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share, I'd love to hear from you.